Loveland Magazine TV videos are brought to you by the generous support of MoveToLoveland.com. Some of the most rewarding time I served was the total of two years I spent in Afghanistan. While there, we cared for literally thousands of injured and ill, and during my 2009 tour, we were the busiest trauma center in the world, caring for over 300 combat casualties a month. 98% of the people who arrived alive survived, uh, and an honorable mission that, we, that brought us great pride. But it was also some of the most painful time that I served, seeing many men and women die in the service of their great nation. Today, as we gather on this most solemn of days, we come together not just to remember, but to honor the, those who fell in the service of our country. We honor those who faced the perils of war and rigors of training, and we honor the families who had endured the unimaginable bearing loss and sacrifice with incredible strength. The combat zone is a place where ordinary individuals are called upon to perform extraordinary acts of courage uh, and resilience. Each day brings its own trials, moments of tension, fear, and uncertainty, and amidst the chaos and danger, bonds are forged that transcend the boundaries of rank and background. I had the great honor of witnessing those bonds while caring for these heroes. Many men and women would arrive uh, to our medical facilities unconscious or unable to speak. When they were able to speak, or if they were still on the ventilator, able to write a note, I don't remember a single instance where a member asked about themselves first. They always asked about their friends. How is Dave? Did Jessica make it? Did anyone else get hurt? And fortunately, many times we were able to pass on good news, but too often we had to be the ones who told them that their friend had died. The pain that they showed was greater than any other I have seen. Greater than telling a young lady she lost her leg. Greater than telling a young man he was going home and would not finish his tour. That one sounds odd to a lot of people, but I'll tell you, folks who find out they're going home, they always showed a lot of pain. They uh, felt they let their units down and they felt a lot of grief and some shame. And this was driven by the belief that their friends were now at increased risk because they were going to leave the battlefield. Fortunately, their own units were our best resource in helping them. Combat deaths are etched into our collective memory, each, a loss, each loss a stark reminder of the price of freedom. And I'd be remiss if I did not honor the memory of Dr. Brian Allgood, Dr. John Pryor, and Dr. Mark, Mark Taylor, all fellow surgeons who were killed in action in the Middle East. Closer to home, I'll honor Marine Captain David Seth Mitchell, a 1997 graduate of Loveland High School, who was killed in Afghanistan in 2009. I'm sure Seth is but one example of many Loveland natives who gave their all. But Memorial Day honors and mourns all military personnel who died while in service of their country, those who bore witness to the horrors of war, but also those who served in the many other capacities the military demands of us. The sacrifices made in pursuit of readiness and excellence are often overlooked, but over 80% of the deaths are non-battle deaths, and they are significant nonetheless. Every life, every life lost and every injury sustained serves as a testament to the inherent risk of military service. During my 12 assignments, we had a death on our base in every single one of our assignments. The profession of arms is truly a dangerous business. While injuries are not technically what Memorial Day honors, I believe it's important to acknowledge and honor the sacrifices made by the injured as well. As evidence of an injury impact, I'll point to the close bond that we see so strongly in combat operations is present at home as well as in combat. We took care, I took care of a security forces airman whose rifle had misfired on the range, and when he cleared the round, the round exploded into his groin. A few days later, I was at the gate and the gate guard was checking my ID and all of a sudden he said, sir, you're the one who repaired my friend's testicle. <laughs> we were so worried, thanks for saving him. He might not have used the word testicle. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I was momentarily struck speechless by the strength of his love for his fellow warriors. And as a healthcare provider, I'd be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to potentially prevent another loss of a warrior and point out that not all injuries are readily apparent. Many current military members and veterans will never speak of the pain and the struggle that continues within them, the toll it takes on them physically and on their mental well-being, 
the sacrifices that extend far beyond the battlefield. The experiences that continue to exact a toll, sometimes leading to death years and even decades after their service has honorably concluded. Suicide is one such problem which continues to plague the military community. If you're concerned about your military member or veteran, ask them, how are you doing? This will almost certainly result in, I'm fine. You must then do the hard thing and ask again, no really, I'm concerned, how are you doing? A few of them will admit they're struggling and you can help them get the assistance they need, but many will not. But I assure you, your efforts are not wasted. I've heard from numerous veterans that just being asked, how are you, changed how they were thinking for the better. And it started them down a path of healing. Oftentimes the people around them don't even realize something happened, but the change has occurred nonetheless. So we are grateful. So many honor the sacrifice made by all our veterans, but we cannot forget the families. The sacrifice, this sacrifice goes un, often goes unrecognized, but they are no less profound. The spouses who bravely handled all the responsibilities of daily life, the children who didn't see their parent at so many events, and the parents who waited anxious, anxiously for news from afar. Many of these families welcomed their loved ones home, but we owe a special gratitude to those families who became a Gold Star family. Their sacrifice is woven into the fabric of the military community, an essential thread in the tapestry of service and devotion. Quite simply, our military would not be nearly as strong if it was not for the quiet devotion of our families. On this Memorial Day, join all of us who feel that special bond forged in the military in honoring the sacrifice of our fallen heroes in supporting all our veterans as they transition back to civilian life and thanking the families who gave so much. This great nation is better off for the sacrifice made by all these great men and women. Thank you for joining me in remembering and honoring the legacy of our nation's heroes. May their sacrifices forever inspire us all. Loveland Magazine TV videos are brought to you by the generous support of MoveToLoveland.com.